Okay, let's take a look at chapter 12, which is compound interest and present value. We're basically, uh, uh, we've already discussed what simple interest is, and simple interest is principal times the rate times the time, and that gives you the amount of interest. We're going to expand that just a little bit and talk about compounding interest, which is the future value of what you invest today. Uh, so compounding involves a calculation of interest periodically over the life of a loan or the investment. After each calculation, the interest is calculated to the principal. Future calculations are on the adjusted principal uh, or the old principal plus interest. The compound interest then is the interest on the principal plus the interest of prior periods. The future value or the compound amount is the final amount of the loan or investment at the end of the last period. In the beginning of this unit, do not be concerned about how to calculate compounding, but try to understand the meaning of compounding. This next figure shows how $1 will grow if it is calculated for four years at 8% annual. This means that the interest is calculated on the balance over, uh, or excuse me, once a year. In figure 12-1, we start with $1, which is a present uh, value. After year one, the dollar with interest is worth $1.08. At the end of year two, the dollar is worth $1.17, and by the end of year four, the dollar is worth $1.36. Note how we start with the present and look to see what the dollar will be worth in the future. Compounding goes from present value to future value. So this illustration shows how that $1 grew over a period of four years when it was compounded annually. Okay, before we learn how to calculate compound interest and compare it to simple interest, you must, under, you must understand the terms that follow. These terms are also used in the next chapter, 13, when uh, calculating um, compounding annuities. Whenever it's compounded annually, that means the interest is calculated on the balance once a year. Compounded and semi-annually means that interest is calculated on the balance every six months or every half year, meaning twice a year. Compounded quarterly means uh, interest is calculated on the balance every three months or every quarter a year, meaning four times a year. And then compounded monthly means it's uh, compounded uh, 12 times a year or uh, calculated on the balance of each month. And then compounded daily means that interest is calculated on the balance each day based on a 360 day year. Now the number of periods, it's a number of years, multiplied by the number of times the interest is compounded per year. For example, if you compound $1 for four years at 8% annually, semi-annually or quarterly, the following periods will result. If it's annually, four for four years, and it's uh, compounded once a year for four years, that's four periods. If it's compounded twice a year for four years, that means it's eight periods. And if it's compounded um, four times a year for four years, that's 16 periods. Now the rate that you'll use to calculate this, this is the annual interest rate divided by the number of times the interest is compounded per year. So compounding changes the interest rate for annual, semi-annual, and quarterly periods as follows. For example, if you uh, compound uh, uh, an investment at 8% uh, once a year, you'll divide that by one to give you the actual 8%. But if it's compounded twice a year at 8% interest, 8 divided by 2 is 4%. That's the percentage that you'll use on these charts. And then um, quarterly, you'll um, take 8% divided by 4 times a year gives you 2%. Note that both the number of periods 4 and the rate 8% for the annual example did not change. You will see later that the rate in periods, not years, will always change unless interest is compounded yearly. Okay, now let's look at the difference between simple interest and compound interest. Did you know that money invested at 6% will double in 12 years? The, Wall, the following Wall Street Journal clipping, Confused by Investing, shows how to calculate the number of years it takes for your investment to double. Although this clip is from 2003, its information is correct today as, as, correct today as it was then. 
It explains compounding and the rule of 72, so read it carefully. If there's something about an investment por portfolio that doesn't seem to add up, maybe you should check your math. Lots of folks are perplexed by the mathematics of investing, so I thought a refresher course might help. Here's uh, a look at some of the key concepts. 10 plus 10 is 21. Okay, how did that happen? Imagine you invest $100, which earns 10% this year and 10% next year. How much have you made? If you answer 21%, go to the head of the class. Here's how the math works. This year's 10% gain turns your $100 into $110. Next year, you also earn 10%, but you start with the year uh, you start the year with $110. The result, you earn $11, boosting your wealth to $121. Thus, your portfolio has earned a cumulative 21% return over two years but the annualized return is just 10%. The fact that 21% is more than double 10% can be attributed to the effect of investment compounding. The way that you earn money year uh, each year, not only on your original investment, but also on the earnings from prior years that you've reinvested. The rule of 72. To get a feel for compounding, try the rule of 72. What's that? If you divide a particular Annual return into 72, you'll find out how many years it will take to double your money. Thus, at 10% a year, an investment will double its value in a tad over 70 year, uh, seven years. Okay, with that in mind, here's an example of simple interest and then calculating the maturity value that we did in Chapter 10. Bill Smith deposited $80 in a savings account for four years at an annual interest rate of 8%. What is Bill's central interest? Interest is equal to principal times the rate times time. So $80 times 0 0.08 after you move the decimal point two places to the left times four years gives you interest of $25.60. In four years, Bill receives a total of $105.60. That's $80 plus the $25.60 uh, that you earned as interest. That's a principal plus a simple interest. Now let's look at um, the interest Bill would earn if the bank compounded Bill's interest on his savings. Okay, first we're going to do it without tables. As we calculate this in this particular chapter, uh, we have the choice of using um, uh, doing it the long way, which is, is how we're going to do it now. Um, then we'll also do tables, but you could also use apps to do this as well. And you would use the apps more in a financial um, uh, financial success type of course. But we're going to do it the long way through tables in this particular course. But first, I want to show you uh, how to calculate compound interest do, going the long way. First, we're going to calculate the simple interest and add it to the principal. Use this total to figure uh, next year's interest. Repeat for the total number of periods. Then, compounded amount minus the principal equals how much interest you earned over that period of time. So in the same problem, Bill Smith deposited $80 in a savings account for four years at an annual compounded rate of 8%. What are Bill's uh, compound amount and interest? Okay, first of all, we are going to use 8% because... 8% uh, divided once a year is still 8%. And then um, uh, once a year times four years is four years, four periods. So uh, we're going to take it times 8%, and that's going to give us interest of $6.40. Plus, the beginning balance of $80 gives us an amount at the end of the year of $86.40. Also want to point out at this point that uh, one of your compounding interest is always done at the end of a period. Now, 8640 at the beginning of next year times 8% will give you interest of 691 plus the beginning of the year's balance of 8640 gives you 9331. Then take 9331 times 8% again gives you interest of 746 plus the uh, uh, a balance at the beginning of the year of 9331 gives you the balance at the end of the year of 100.77. Then 
Then finally, the last year, take 100.77 times 8% to give you interest of $8.06 plus the beginning balance of 100.77 will give you the end of the year balance of 108.83. Note that the beginning year two interest is a result of the interest of year one added to that principal. Um, at the end of each interest period, we add on the period's interest. This interest becomes part of the principal uh, we use for the calculation of the next period's interest. We can determine Bill's compound interest as follows. First of all, his compounded amount or future value is $108.83 minus the initial investment of $80, meaning that he earned $28.83. Excuse me. Note in situation one that the interest was $25.60. So we earned more by uh, compounding the interest rather than using simple interest. Now we could have simplified this problem just a little bit. We could have used the, uh, the following simplified process to calculate the compounded amount and the interest. Um, we could have taken, it's 8%. So add 100%, since $80 is 100% of the value plus an 8% increase, that's 108%. Then move the decimal point two places to the left, and uh, that would be 1.08, and that would give us a balance at the end of year one of $86.40. Then go to year two times an 8% increase plus 100, or 1 1.08, would give us an end of the year balance of 93.31. Then the third year, 93.31 times 1.08 would give us the end of the year balance of 100.77. Then finally, the fourth year, 100.77 times 1.08 gives us a future value of 108.83. Gives us the same answer that we received when we worked it out longer and uh, where it showed us the interest and then we added the interest back to the beginning of the year balance. By taking that time uh, plus 100% uh, plus 8%, that actually eliminates that process and gets us to the end of the year balance more quickly. Okay, when using this simplification, you do not have to add the new interest to the previous balance as I just explained. Remember that compounding results in higher interest rates than simple interest. Compounding is the sum of the principal and the interest multiplied by the interest rate we use to calculate interest for the next period. So 1.08 above is 108% with 100% as a base and 8% as the interest. This is what we're going to do in this chapter. We're actually going to use a table. Uh, the table to calculate the compound amount with a, a future value table use the following steps. Find the periods. That's the years multiplied by the number of times interest is compounded in a year. Whether it's compounded annually, annually semi-annually, um, quarterly, or monthly. Then find the rate. Annual rate is divided by the number of times that's compounded in that one year period. Go down the period column of the table to the number of periods desired. Look across the row to find that rate. At the intersection of the two columns is a table factor for the compounded amount of $1. Multiply the table, fa table factor by the amount of the loan, and this will give the future value or the compounded amount. Okay, so here is the same situation. Um, Bill deposited $80 into a savings account for four years at an interest rate of 8% interest compounded annually. So Bill heard that he could calculate the compounded amount and interest by using tables. In situation uh, three, Bill learns how to do this. Again, Bill wants to know the value of $80 in four years at 8% interest. He begins by using table 12-1. First, we have to determine how many periods there are in one year. Well, it's compounded once a year, and we're going to compound it for four years, so that gives us four periods. Okay, looking at table 12-1, Bill goes down the period column to four, uh, the fourth period, and then across to uh, the row to the 8% column. Uh, we get 8% because it's 8% uh, divided by the number of times it's compounded each year. 8 divided by 1 is 8. So we're going to use 8% and 4 periods. 
Okay, so here is 8% right here. Okay, that didn't work out so well. Okay, they've already done it anyway. So we went to the future value of $1 of compound interest, found 8% across the top, and then went down to the fourth period on the left-hand side and found the intersection of 8% and four periods of 1.3605. We're going to take that factor and multiply it times the initial investment of $80, and that equals the future value of $108.84. Okay, now the next step is okay, I didn't find it. <laughs> uh, let's see. Okay, I didn't find that particular one, so I'll back out of it. And uh, I was looking for the $108 and, um, okay, there it is, $108.84. Uh, take that, uh, that's the difference between $80 and $108.84, and that's the amount of interest that was earned on this particular uh, example. I want to switch back over to the booklet <coughs> that I provided, uh, the handout. This is chapter 12, and uh, we have an example uh, of an investment of $1,050 at 16% interest compounded quarterly for uh, five years. First, we're going to take the uh, interest rate of 16%, and since it's being compounded quarterly, we're going to divide 16% divided by 4 to give us 4%. Okay, then, since it's based upon a, uh, a five-year period and it's compounded four times a year, that will give us 20 periods. So we're going to use that future value table, and I have one that's attached to this, and the, uh, the factors may be just a little bit different, but only by pennies. And what we'll do is go to the, um, the table right here. Oops, sorry, I've forgotten what it was. Um, we're going to go to the, uh, the corresponding factor. We're going to find the corresponding factor of 4% and 20 periods on a future value table. Okay, this one's a um, compound value of $1 or future value, value. So we are going to find the corresponding factor of 20 periods. And ooh, I've already forgotten it again. 20 periods. and 4%. 20 periods and 4% gives us the corresponding factor of 2.1911. It's a corresponding factor of 4% and 20 periods. Okay, I'm going to go back to the problem now. Now that I know what that factor is, 2.1911, we're going to take that times the investment of $1,050, and our future value is $2,300.66. How much interest did I earn? We'll just take the difference between the future value of $2,300.66 and the amount that you uh, invested of $1,050 and the interest earned is $1,250.66, which is undoubtable because we are at 16% interest um, annually on this particular problem. So uh, that's going to yield some really good results uh, in this type of a scenario. Okay, now the true rate uh, that we're going to get if you have $8,000 investment invested at 8% quarterly for one year, what is the true rate of interest? So we're going to take 8% and divide it by four times a year to give us 2%. And then we're going to take um, uh, four times a year times annually one year to give us four periods. 
So again, I'm going to go to the future value table and find four periods and 2%. Okay, so four periods and then go over to 2%. That's going to give us 1.0824. Okay, there we are. 1.0824 times the investment of $8,000. That gives us a compounded amount of 86.5920. Okay, how much interest did I earn? Just subtract or take the difference between the future value, which is a compounded amount of 86,520, and take the difference of 8,000, the investment, the principal, and the interest is 65920. Okay, to, to find the uh, effective rate or the true rate, rate is equal to the interest divided by the uh, principal times the time. So the interest is 659.20 divided by the principal 8,000 times the time of one for one year. So 659.20 divided by 8,000 equals, um, after you move the decimal point two places to the right, 8.24%. It was originally at 8%, but the effective rate is slightly a little bit higher of 8.24%. Okay, this next one is compounded uh, interest, but daily. So we're going to use a completely different table. Uh, the one that you have in your textbook is good to work through some of the problems. And this is a little bit problematic in this particular chapter because you may have to, be, you may have to use the handbook associated with it. Uh, but whenever you're using Connect, you'll be able to find the right uh, table in the, uh, the Connect um, uh, in, in the ebook through Connect. Um, I also have a uh, table that's associated with this particular handout, and it is different, but uh, it will accomplish the same goal if the uh, percentage and the periods are both listed there. Okay, it's based on a 360 day calendar year, and we have interest compounded daily. That's going to be a key word for us daily. That means I'm not going to use that future value table. I'm going to use a table that has the word daily in it. Um, for $900 at 6% interest uh, each year for 25 years. This is the only uh, calculation that I use the actual uh, percentage and the actual number of years. So I'm going to go to the daily table and find the corresponding factor of 6% and 25 years. In this handout, I've provided this one right here. Oh, goodness. And in my example, I don't have it. 6% is not even listed there, and 25 years is not listed. Uh, but if I, it were, I would go to the 6% and 25 years and find the corresponding factor. And whatever that corresponding factor is, Uh, which apparently is 4.4811. Multiply that times the investment of 900. And so my compounded amount or future value of this uh, amount that was compounded daily is $4,032.99. How much did I earn over that 25 years? We'll take the difference between $4,032.99 and the face value of 900, the amount of the investment and the difference is what I earned over that 25-year period of $3,132.99. Okay, there's one more component of this chapter, and then we'll stop, and that factor is present value. That's when you look into the future to find out what you must invest today to get that amount in the future. So if you know that an education will cost a total of $12,000 at the end of the next five years, how much must you invest today to receive $12,000 in five years when your mon money is compounded quarterly for the next five years at 8% interest? The first thing I'm going to do is I know it's 8% interest compounded quarterly. So I'm going to take 8% divided by 4 and that will equal 2%. And then it's for five years 
and it's gonna be compounded four times each year to give us 20 periods. So I'm gonna find the corresponding factor on the present value table of 2% and 20 periods. 2% and 20 periods, here it is. So here's 2% and here's 20 periods. I'm gonna find the corresponding factor and it's gonna bring us right there to 0 0.6730. Okay, so there's 0 0.6730 times the amount that we'll need in five years of $12,000. That will equal the present value, the amount that we invest today of $8,076. Okay, how much interest will I actually earn by doing this if I invested $8,076 today? I will take the difference between the present value of $8,076 and the future value needed of 12,000, and the difference is how much I earned of $3,924. So today, you must invest $8,076 if you desire to withdraw $12,000 at the end of the next five year period based on 8% interest compounded quarterly. So I, today I'm investing $8,076 to get a $12,000 payout at the end of the five-year period. With present value, you must look into the future to determine what amount is needed today to access that certain amount in the future. That concludes chapter 12.